Now let's look at the average power delivered to an inductor. Once again, the average power we've defined as um, the integral over the period, over one period, of the instantaneous power. But in an inductor, if the current is given by that, the voltage is equal to L times di dt, or L times I sub p times omega times the derivative of the sine, which is the cosine of omega t. The current times the voltage, then, is equal to, and it's this term right here that we're going to be integrating, the instantaneous power, p of t, is equal to L as omega L I sub p squared times the cosine squared times the sine, or not the, the cosine squared, times the cosine times the sine. So the average power, then, is the integral over one period of the instantaneous power. Now, to integrate that cosine times sine, the trick on that is to use the trig identity that the cosine of something times the sine of something is equal to one-half of the sine of two times that something. When we integrate that over the period, again, this sine term is oscillating twice as quickly as either the sine or the, co either the cosine or the sine terms are. So in the interval from 0 to t, this term goes through two complete cycles. Nonetheless, integrating over that leaves us with no contribution or leaves us with zero average power. I'd like you to stop the video and review that integration for just a second and convince yourself that the average power delivered to an inductor over one cycle is actually zero. The math shows it. What's happening? What's happening in this circuit? To understand that, let's again look at the graphs. Here's our graph of the instantaneous voltage times the current and the instantaneous power in a resistor. Unlike a resistor, in an inductor, good old Eli, the voltage leads the current by 90 degrees. So theta i is 0, theta v is 90. We have the situation where they are no longer synchronized. And the multiplication of this times this gives us a sine wave that is oscillating at twice the frequency as the source itself. But there's as much energy or as much area below the curve as there is above the curve. And when you integrate over that period, the integral of that is zero. In other words, the average power associated with an inductor is equal to zero. What's going on? During this part of the cycle, the power is negative. During this part of the cycle, the power is positive. During this part of the cycle, the circuit is delivering power to the inductor and is being absorbed by its magnetic field. Energy is being stored in the magnetic field. The magnetic field is being enhanced. During this part of the cycle, that magnetic field is contracting. The energy that had been stored in it is being put back into the circuit. So effectively, during half the cycle, we're storing energy in the inductive a magnetic field during the other half of the cycle that energy is being put back into the circuit and there is no net power delivered to an inductor. We have a similar situation considering the average power in a capacitor. Once again there is a differential relationship between the voltage and current. In the capacitor if we specify the voltage being sinusoidal like that, and this should be a V sub P, then the voltage will be C times the derivative of the voltage. And the instantaneous power then will just be, coming on over to there, the instantaneous power P of T is omega C V sub P squared times the cosine of omega T times the sine of omega T. Just as we had with the inductor, we've got the product of the cosine times the sine, and again using that trig identity, we replace that product with a single sinusoidal term oscillating at twice the frequency. This term is a lot easier to integrate. When we integrate that to give us the average power, 
we have the same situation that we had with the inductor. And once again, the average power, P, associated with a capacitor is equal to zero. Once again, how are we to understand that? In a capacitor, the voltage and current are 90 degrees out of phase with each other. When you multiply those two together, you end up with something analogous to what we had with the inductor. During this part of the cycle, the power is positive. When we integrate over that, we get additional energy being stored in the electric field of the capacitor. During this part of the cycle, that energy is being released from the capacitor and put back into the circuit. <clears throat> During this half of the cycle, the capacitor is acting as a load. During this half of the cycle, it's effectively acting as a source. And again, as was the case in the inductor, that energy is being put into the capacitor during half the cycle and then being put back into the circuit during the other half of the cycle. The average power, P, associated with a capacitor is equal to zero.